According to a report from the International Energy Agency, by the year 2020, the United States could be exporting more oil than Saudi Arabia. And by 2035, we could, in fact, be getting by on our own supply of oil and natural gas. When this came out, it was huge news, right? American energy independence, it's supposed to be awesome. But we thought to ourselves, you know, can't we do better than that? There must be new technologies out there we could be looking at. And when we looked around, we discovered, yes, there are lots of them. These are the ideas that we think stand the best chance of bringing home true American energy independence. We're here in the sun-kissed and wind-blasted expanse of Tehachapi, California, about three hours outside of Los Angeles, where since the 1980s they've been building wind turbines on these hills to capture the ample energy that you can probably see all around me. The problem with wind power is that it's really hard to predict. It comes and goes with the weather. And so GE has built a new facility out here that's testing the concept of what if you store a little bit of that energy to make up for that gap every so often using new battery technology and new algorithms. Hi. Hey, Jake. How you doing? Keith Longton. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. well. Here you go. Here's oh, thanks. Here's a helmet and, and glasses Great. here for Appreciate you. Appreciate it. So this is our, our new brilliant turbine here. Yeah. Uh, why don't we uh, take a walk down here and take a look at it? Okay, sounds right. good. I can see uh, why you So Keith, tell me about the, the problem that this design is intended to solve. So over the last 10 years, the wind industry has done very well in reducing the cost of energy of wind. The next thing we do, though, is to really make that predictable. And right. that's really what the grid wants. These are our, our GE Durathon batteries. It's 10 modules. Each one of those modules is 20 kilowatt hours. So sure. it's 200 kilowatt hours of battery. For the commercial application, it's going to be a lot less. It's going to be around 25 to 75 kilowatt hours. We'll be able to retrofit the turbines that we've sold over the past couple of years. And going forward, our newer turbines will have an option to be able to, to have this battery integrated. That's cool. If you look at the bottom of your screen, see that little figure waving to the left of the turbine? That's me. I'm uh, standing next to a, a new GE creation here that's 80 meters tall, just the tower. The diameter of the blades themselves is 100 meters. At its highest point, when a blade is reaching to the sky, this thing is over 400 feet tall. That's pretty unbelievable, especially when you consider that at 499 feet, you gotta get the FAA involved because then you've gotten into airspace problems. So Jake, if you come in here, this is our, what we call the bunker here. This black line is our forecast. That's uh, what you're promising to the grid. That's right, that's exactly right. The green line is what the wind is actually doing, and the blue line is the power output. Our objective is to have the blue line match the black line. Right, right, right. right. So you can see right here where the wind dropped, Yeah. but our power didn't drop because we're able to compensate with that with the batteries. Gotcha, so the, the red, red line, line is the battery at the bottom, making up for the difference. You got it. Gotcha, exactly. gotcha. Our goal is to be able to be 99% accuracy right. in, in that prediction. So one of the other applications that we have is what we call ramp control, because the grid can only absorb right. so much wind power at a time, and, and, and typically it's about 10% per, per minute. So you want to have a nice controlled ramp up, got it. and you'd like to have a nice controlled ramp right. down. Right, you don't want to go from zero megawatts to 100 megawatts you got it. in, in moments, minutes. Right. right, right. So you want to do that over a 10 minute period. So you can see this red line is what, what you're looking for, and this is without the, the ramp control. So if you walk on down here, you can start to see when we, when we turn the command on and start following the ramp control, you can see that the blue line now tracks the red line, yeah. and we're able to follow that through and hit that prediction both up and down. Even though the wind is going up and down That's right. throughout that time. That's exactly right. What happens right now with an existing turbine that doesn't have this system that you've built here, which, which helps the grid out? To integrate 100 megawatts of wind power into the grid today without this, it costs between $1 and $7 a megawatt hour, depending on where you are in the U.S. Every $1 megawatt hour is about $400,000 per year of spinning reserves, basically, that the grid needs to maintain to integrate that. By doing this, we think we will be able to do it more cost-effectively than that, mm -hmm. and so ultimately we're driving down the cost of energy of wind. And then, as you and I, as consumers, we benefit from that. Right, right, right. It drops our, our electricity bills. Let's be realistic about 
the potential of wind energy. Right now, wind power only accounts for 4% of the nation's total energy mix, and even the people who are most excited about it admit that it's probably never going to be more than 25%. Wind has a lot going for it. I mean, wind power involves no water, no fuel, there's no emissions, and when you get them up and running, wind farms can be run by really only a single person and yet can power, you know, a whole city. The problem with wind power is that at a certain point, it's cost prohibitive to grow a turbine past a certain size. And so instead, it, it comes down to projects like this, where you're trying to use algorithms, you're trying to use battery power to create a predictable energy source out of one of the planet's most unpredictable forms of energy. 